welcome to ADTV and today you've joined us on the banks of Homersfield Lakes and we're joined by none other than Phil Sphinx. So thanks again Phil for coming out with us. I know you're always out doing features but today we've got something a little bit different because what we want to do is look at the Deeper Pro in more detail. It's been a very popular product and hopefully we'll get a bit of your insight into what you've learned for it today. So the challenge is to use the Deeper, find yourself a spot and then catch a fish. So that's what we're going to be up to. Now I know you are no stranger into fish finders themselves. I use them a lot on say big reservoirs and stuff like that. Yeah, I was calling feature finders more than fish finders. Yeah. But on, on the big reservoirs, when you're looking for shoals of bait fish or you're looking for drop offs, um, you know, you'd be, there are thousands of acres, some of these yeah. reservoirs, and you'd be fairly lost without one. <laughs> Just a massive sheet of water <laughs> with a bit of guesswork involved. So let's concentrate a little bit on the deeper itself. So a little bit of basics, how to set it up first before I pass over to Phil about how he's used it today. So first thing to do is take the Deeper Pro out of the box and fully charge it. Then obviously you're ready to go. So you need to download the app from the App Store. And then on the Deeper itself, there's three different metal attachments that you can use for different heights. So one of them at the bottom is basically if you're casting from the bank. The one in the middle is if you're casting from an elevated position, say a bridge or something like that. And then the top one is if you're going to use one of the boat mounts and use it sort of on the big reservoirs that Phil was saying. So attach it into which one you want and then you're ready to go. You've got a smart mount that you can put your phone on your rod and a deeper night cover as well if you use it at night. So a few different things that you can customise it to yourself. But this is now where you come in, Phil. Yep. So you've had a, a go with this today. So the first thing I want to touch on is what you've set this up on because let's face it, if you've gone out and bought yourself a fish find the last thing you want to do is cast out and find out you lose it first cast isn't yeah. it so what have you set that up on today um well i'm using a, i think it's a three and a half pound tesco of carp rod it's quite a heavy braid i think it's 58 pound breaking strain braid straight through yeah um with a very strong swivel clip on the end um, the last thing you want to do is cast it out there and for something to break and you to <laughs> yeah, lose, the, exactly. lose the fish finder. So looking more at the app itself, you've had the actual setup on a detailed view. Yes, yeah, so there's basic yeah. or detailed, you've had it on detail. Uh, you've had it on a wide angle, which based on what you were saying, is it gives you a, yeah, a you, broader if, area. If you imagine that what it's reading underneath it, you have a choice of a, a narrow where it's going to read almost straight underneath it. And if you set it on wide, it's going to read a, a bigger area underneath yeah. it. So if you were looking for shoals of roach or something, say you were using it for pike fishing and you wanted to try and find some, some fish that the pike are preying on, it's going to, um, it's going to read a bit further underneath yeah. it. Cool. And then the other thing is there's sensitivity on there as well, which is a little bar that you just slide up and down. I've noticed you had that about halfway. Yeah, yeah, if you set the sensitivity too high, it will pick up all sorts of interference. So yeah. you, you, you'll have to have a play with it and just get it at halfway, maybe three quarters. Yeah. It might vary depending on the venue. If, if you were to use it on a river, you might find you need to tone it tone down, it down a, little a bit. Cool, so there's a, a basic sort of guide how Phil has set it up today. So let's talk a little bit about today and your findings. Now, you've done obviously a lot of work here yourself, finding it through marker floats, hard work and stuff like that. But when you cast this out today, have you found what you expected to find? Yeah, it was it was nice to confirm that my knowledge was correct. Yeah, exactly. and, and I trust what it's telling me as yeah. well. Um, we're fishing a swim. We've got a real pronounced marginal shelf. Yeah, um, it's fairly shallow water for quite a way out in the swim, and then it down it goes. goes yeah, and um, there's also a, when when you get to the shallow water, there's a lot of weed. There is, and it was interesting that you can clearly see all the weed on the fish finder yeah. as well. Yeah, it literally comes right up to the surface and actually look, even appears on the screen, looks like weed. There's yeah. no mistake yeah. in it. I know there's a fish icon you can have on there if you want, yeah. but the bigger arcs of uh, fish, which you said is as you're dragging a fish finder over, you see fish as more arcs than Yeah, than but fish people shapes. may think that it's the fish moving through the water, but it's your deeper fish finder moving over the fish. So it leaves a long line sort of sitting off the bottom or mid water. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not the fish going along in the water. Quite often, it's you pulling, pulling it over, over the top, top of the, the fish. fish. But cool. if you if you're seeing quite large, almost like um, they are arcs. Yeah, that is that is bigger fish. Larger fish. Yeah. Cool. And then you've done a real neat trick. I like this one. So you've cast this out. You found your spot, which is sort of like off the bottom of a drop off. Yeah. Obviously, you knew it already, but it's confirmed it. And then what you've done is you clipped up the deeper when it was at the point you wanted to fish it to drop yeah. off and you've gone around your marker sticks. Yeah, it just made sense to me as, as I was bringing it and I saw it then start sloping up slightly. As soon as it starts gradually coming up, yeah. I just put the line in the line clip. I can reel in the deeper, 
mark it out on my marker sticks and then mark my fishing rod out at the same distance and know that I'm dropping it on the bottom yeah. of that shelf. It is brilliant. How quick you've done that, that would take you so long to do with a marker float to map the same yeah, distance. To, to find it? that point on the bottom of that shelf with a marker float, you're going to constantly be counting your marker float to yeah. the top then winding it back down and bringing it in a bit and counting it back up again until it then starts getting a little bit yeah. shallower and it was just one cast, one drift with it yeah. and we knew exactly where yeah. it was. Not forgetting you haven't got to pull it through all the weed like you would a marker float no, as well no. so it is really easy, one plop and you find out an awful lot of information yeah. so hopefully, as fingers crossed this, that information you found out is going to put a fish on the bank so I'll let you get some more bait out, get your rigs on there and hopefully we can catch up with a fish. Yeah. So here we have it, all the proof you need that modern technology can aid you in your fishing situation. Phil's used the deeper today, he's found a spot, he's put some bait on it and been rewarded in this absolute cracker of a mirror. Well done Phil, I knew you'd do it mate, but we'll get him back, we won't keep him out too long. <laughs>